how do we look at anger and make it our friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that that I like that word approach because the approach is is that we first have to kind of get the mindset of what is it that we're working with. Mm -hmm. If we approach it with it's something bad in me, then we we are already kind of crippling ourselves in our approach because now all we can do is try to fix this, try to get rid of this, try to, you know, kind of uh, patch it up somehow. Well, in kind of the 80s, they had those encounter groups where people were like pounding pillows and, you know, primal screaming and all that stuff. And they thought they were releasing the anger. But what, in effect, what they were doing is actually rewiring and, and hardwiring the brain to feel the anger even more yeah. instead of actually making it successful so they they stopped doing those things as you know unless you're in some old group that hadn't got the the memo on that that uh that 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 we think that if we just like yell a lot and express it yeah. and get tell people off that that's going to get rid of it but it actually is making us more a prison to it and and using it as a tool of destruction than actually a tool of wisdom it can, but there, there you see the, let's say, the, the misunderstanding that often arises when people take uh, techniques from psychoanalysis or mm -hmm. other psychologies and use them in isolation. Yeah. Because catharsis is part of psychoanalysis, and it was considered a good way to deal with some of these emotions. Uh, but when you take it in isolation and you're not doing the deeper work of psychoanalysis, then you're just doing what you're, you're describing. We're working right? on the ego level, and yeah. psychoanalysis works on the unconscious. That's yeah. right. Uh, and, and yeah, so pounding pillows and expressing anger would simply reinforce that behavior mm -hmm. um, because it feels good. It's yeah. self-reinforcing in a sense. And there's something about in the process, if you're doing individuation work, we're going to talk about that that feeling of being able to be present with it is good, but you want to, like you said, approach it in the right way. Right. So the approach then is that there's nothing wrong here. It's simply we're working with our mind mm -hmm. and part of our mind is having this uh, this thing we call emotions. And one of the primary emotions is anger, that it's been there, it's served us and it's a tool that we can use, but we don't necessarily have to repress it and to be to label it, label it as bad. Mm -hmm. So once we we get that right frame of mind, then we can proceed. Now, here's a little, uh, let's say, a, a little uh, kind of model that you can use in working with emotions. Because most of us are, are taught to, to think in terms of this, that, that the emotion we're having he, uh, somehow, somehow uh, is identified with us mm. and that we are, are identifying with it. The I, which is a temporary false sense of self, uh, is the one that is caught up in the anger. Mm. In essence, it is the one that is defending itself so with the, the ego. anger. Yeah, the ego, that I. Mm. Uh, but it's a false sense of self. Yeah. Uh, when we're caught up in that self, then, and that false sense of self and the ego, uh, then it appears that uh, I should be angry, right? It, because somebody hurt me, somebody did wrong to me. But what we want to, the way we want to approach it here is to step back a little bit and to ask who is the one that is observing that experience of anger? Mm. And that observer is the witness, the pure awareness in us. And when we approach it that way, now we can work with any emotion, including anger, without getting caught up in it. You know what really helped me uh, when you described, and this is uh, in um, Eastern spirituality, they talk about this, mm -hmm. um, is that you see the e ego as an object in the world, interacting with other objects. So instead of your the object, it's like you're watching this character <laughs> that's you, this object have yeah. anger. And so it, it helps like um, have a different perspective on that relationship we have to ourselves. It's 
this is an object, this is a persona. It's not as real as I think it is. It's a construct that's functioning in the world, mm -hmm. but it's not really who I am. Um, and then you, you stop being so defensive around it because it's like this, it's not you that you're defending. You're, it's just almost a hologram that you're defending or yeah. um, the, uh, the great powerful eyes, you know, the projection of, of this little part of ourselves into the world.